Well, as, as any legend, any, um, it has a form of mystery behind it, and uh, this is no different uh, than East Peoria is, uh, Kohala Monster. So uh, what we know is a teenager sighted uh, the monster in, back in 1972, and it kind of, the story kind of became a legend. Peoria. So there was multiple sightings after it to the point I think where they, a search team was was put together and to go find the koala monster and someone got hurt. So it was in 72 one of my friends worked at a gas station and uh, he had a friend that lived up Cole Street at the top of the hill and he had car problems one night when he got off work and he decided well he'll just walk up Cole Hollow Road and he said he got to the point where about where the hill was and he noticed that all the crickets had stopped and everything got quiet then he claims he saw something white and hairy standing there staring at him through the brush and there he goes takes off up the hill as fast as he goes I said it was incredible I said it must have been 12 feet tall at that point we were all sitting around listening to the radio and people would call in to the DJ all the time and talk to him. So I called the DJ up and said, hey, we just left Coal Hollow Road and we just saw a big hairy monster up there that went out over the radio all that night and all the next day. When Dale gets a hold of me the next day and he says, hey, he says, there was a, quite a few people up on Coal Hollow Road the other night. So we drove up there one afternoon and a lot of cars parked there and we parked and this lady and this guy came up to me and she was from the Journal Star. And she wanted to know if any of us had seen the monster. I said, oh yeah, I can show you right where it's at. <laughs> There's the outline of it, and they took a picture of it. Took a picture of me pointing, and there you have Next thing you know, it's in the paper. That weekend, over 250 people up there looking for this thing. People were reporting this thing wading down the Illinois River. In a small county known as Tazewell County in central Illinois, there's a stretch of pavement known as Coal Hollow Road. This road is sparsely populated, mainly contains small subdivisions and farmland surrounding on both sides. Even as a child, this road seemed very ominous and eerie, especially at night. But in 1972, this road itself was the center of a monster sighting. Reports indicated that the monster was anywhere between eight and 10 feet tall with brown and white fur covering its mostly muscular body, reported to have no neck once it was sighted, usually it let out a high-pitched scream or wail. Researchers would return to the area to find tracks. In late May of 1972, a man by the name of Randy Emmert reported to the Pekin police that he had seen this creature. He reported it was anywhere between 8 and 10 feet tall with mostly white fur. He did tell police that he did not see the face of this monster. Once the creature had realized he was being observed by Randy, the creature let out a very high-pitched scream and left behind three-toed tracks. Media picked up on this and named the creature the Coal Hollow Road Monster, or Cohomo for short. On May 25, 1972, Pekin and East Peoria Police Departments had received over 200 reports of the Cohomo. By July, there were so many reports of the monster that 100 volunteers had organized to find this creature after it was reported to have destroyed a fence. But they were quickly stopped by Tazewell County Sheriff's Office when a man by the name of Carl R. Harris accidentally shot himself with his 22 caliber pistol. Sightings continued after that. A Eureka, Illinois man reported that he had seen the Cohomo in Fond du Lac Park in East Peoria. The man was attending a birthday party at the park when he noticed the creature and called it into East Peoria Police Department. The man had feared that it was an escape orangutan from the local zoo and it could harm some of the children that were in the park. When the man made the report to the police, the police had stated that Cohomo sightings in that area were quite common. And the man was astonished and reported back that he had never heard of the Cohomo outside of the newspaper reports coming from Pekin. Even today, footprints are being found along the Illinois River and some of its surrounding tributaries and creeks in the area. This is a photo of a possible track given to me by the Kohala Road Monster EP Facebook page, so a special shout out to them. In recent years, even howls and screams have been heard coming from the woods late at night in the areas surrounding Pekin and Peoria. This track was taken in 2015. Investigators reported that the track was larger than the investigator's foot, and he reports that he wears a size 12 boots. 
Also, some knuckle drag marks were found around these tracks, implicating that the creature had dropped to all fours and started running. The initial stride of this creature was measured to be about six feet. These tracks were taken in central Illinois. Following images are images provided to me by the Koala Road Monsters Facebook page. These pictures just show the creature's high traffic areas. It got me attention immediately because they weren't talking about a monkey. They were talking about some kind of a huge man-like uh, creature that was much bigger and faster and stronger than an ape or a gorilla and it was roaming the woods and some people were calling it um, a missing link or a, they the caveman kept popping up. My name is Michael Cook. I've been researching Bigfoot for 20 years. What got you started with Bigfoot? Face to face encounter. So tell us uh, in, about that first encounter. I skipped school one day, went fishing when I was 16 years old. I uh, found myself on the river bank in, at Martins Fork River Dam. The morning was perfect. Uh, it wasn't too cold. It was uh, in the 50s. It's nice. The sun was coming up over top of the ridge. Couldn't really see anything on the ridge, but I kept on hearing something move back and forth. And uh, first I thought it was deer or maybe squirrels playing. To this day, 20 years later, I, I don't know if it took a wrong step. It tripped. It done something. And it lost its footing. It comes straight down the hill end over end and it sounded like somebody threw a truck when it rolled into the river I thought it was a bear because <clears throat> the only thing I saw was a big ball of hair um, that's when it stood up there was a couple of apple trees that come down there's one dogwood tree set right down there at the end of the yard and right up out of the apple trees, he was standing in between the apple trees down there in that little field in that dogwood tree. It, whatever it was, but it had great big eyes. And the light was hitting just right in the eyes. The eyes looked to be about that big ground, but they were way off the ground. I mean, they were eight, nine foot off the ground. And my dad, being the way he was, he, he seen it and he turned around and hollered at it, and, you know, told whatever it was needed to step into the light. And, you know, just, it wouldn't move. He said, I'm gonna tell you one more time, step in the light. And he throwed down with that 45, shot right at it. That thing turned and just tore a path down through the woods, down through there. All, the creek was probably a good three quarters of a mile, mile back down there, not a mile, but at least a half a mile straight back through the woods right there. But it, everything it touched from trees that big around, just up as high as them boxes right there, just all the way to that river, it just destroyed everything out there, it just broke it off. He had no problem following the path. It was very mysterious because the eye shine that we saw it didn't make sense to us. It didn't look like anything that I know that existed in that in those woods. And I, I'm, I'm a wildlife researcher. I'm very familiar with wildlife and nature. And um, I've seen all kinds of animals both day and night. Um, but this was unrecognizable. I, w I wanted to ask you more about the situation with your dogs. The, the dogs that were killed. Um, you said it seemed to have, like, jumped over the pen. Yeah, the fin was not damaged at all it was it, I, so we that that picture i showed you of the deer with its head twisted is that what they all look like pretty much yeah it was like it had maybe broke their necks there was no blood or nothing
like yo. Get up here where I can see my foot. 